Welcome back to another Truth Matters podcast episode where we are speaking the truth while it's still legal. Thanks for tuning in. Sit back, relax, and get ready to hear the truth. I'm your host, Matt Franklin. Hello, friends, and here we are again with another Truth Matters podcast, episode 46. Thank you for tuning in today, and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Remember, this is the day that the Lord has made, so I will rejoice and be glad therein. But that's not the episode we have for you today. We actually want to talk about the importance of having a pastor. This is so important, and um, I'm shocked by some of the people that claim to be Christians, not saying they're not, but they don't really think that it's important to be based in a Bible-based church or a church period. And, you know, that kind of grieves me because I've always been raised, you know, Mama told me, son, you better go to church, you better be faithful. (laughs) And, uh, you know, even though I didn't like it at the time, it was very true. Yeah, And it's so important to have a pastor and to have a community where yes. you can come together and you can build one another in your faith and you can learn from your pastor and your teachers. And, you know, you have this community where God can use you to reach the world. And I know that we're the church. I know that God lives in us. We're the temple. But the truth is we need a physical body of yeah. members that we come together on a weekly basis and learn God's ways and worship our God. I think that trend was starting to happen anyways. We were starting to go in that direction, you know, as the church as a whole. But I think, you know, with everything that happened last year, that was really the straw that broke the camel's back when it comes to people just thinking that online church is enough. And um, if they just watch church online, then that's enough. And they really don't need a pastor. They don't really don't need to be um, physically in church. It separated. the weak from the strong. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I understand that maybe some churches close down and, um, you know, if that's your faith, I'm not going to, you know, put you down for that. But some people are still not back. <laughs> they, they don't think they have to go back to church. They don't, they don't think they need it anymore. They've almost kind of gotten comfortable living the way they have. Yeah. And they feel Complacent. like they, they don't need to have that body of, members of uh, children of God, you know, to to congregate in that bond with one another. And I just want to ask you, if you don't have a church, who's going to hold you accountable? Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, my husband, my wife, that's okay, and that's great, and we need to do that. But we're talking about the importance of having a pastor, having a pastor. John Maxwell, he said it like this, the goal of the pastor is not to get people to show up, but to get people to grow up. I love Ooh, that. That's good. It's about growing up in Him. Yeah. If you don't have mm-hmm. anyone to congregate with, who are you going to show the brotherly love to? Yeah. As the Bible says, we need one another. We, we need, really do. And Cain, thousands of years ago in the beginning, he said, Am I my brother's keeper? We are to keep one another in the faith and that's to true. hold one another accountable. And you know, when I'm at church, there. Oh my gosh, there, there's just such a difference. Obviously, we've all, if your church has church online, that's a blessing. Okay. I'm, our church does this. And when I'm at home or my, and am I, when I'm at home sick or my children are sick, that is a blessing to be able to watch church online. But I'm telling you right now, there is nothing that compares to being in an actual service with actual brothers and sisters in Christ, with a pastor, with, um, the worship team, there is nothing because you know what it is? We're strengthening one another where um, you can draw strength from being in a church service with uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ from your pastor because it's biblical. That is the way God designed it to be. Like I said, Facebook, online church is a blessing, but there is nothing like that physical service. Right. And, uh, There's a question that was asked in James 5 and 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the what? The The church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And I just want to make a point. Prayer is powerful. 
even if you're not exercising the laying on of hands. If you're a million miles away and you ask me to pray for you, I truly believe God will hear that prayer and meet your need. But there is power in coming together and the laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the uh, six elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ. Yes. Is the laying on of hands, the power of laying on of the hands. There is such power when you come together with your brothers and sisters. And if you're sick and you call the elders of the church to pray for you, you know, how are you going to do that if you don't have a church? How are you going to do that if you don't have a body of Christ that you're in fellowship with? That's true. And again, the importance of a pastor, your pastor, and I know you're going to read some scripture that backs this up. The pastor is the shepherd of the church. He is there as shepherd are to actual sheep. Shepherds lead and guide their sheep just as your pastor is meant and he is positioned by God to lead and be over your church. Did you know that our podcast is reaching people across the globe? When you donate to this ministry, you are helping us spread the gospel to people all around the world. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, you can do so by clicking the PayPal link in the description box below or email us at truthmatterswithmatt at gmail.com. Thank you for helping us spread the truth in love. Ephesians 4 and 11 gives us five callings that we have to have. It's called the fivefold ministry, which is for the perfecting of the saints. Ephesians 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So there's five unique callings there unique ordinances Mm -hmm. that God designed. Now, if a pastor wasn't important, why would it be mentioned in the Bible? Why would it be one of the fivefold ministries for the perfecting of the saints? So it's important if you're going to be a perfect Christian, and I know we kind of trample on that word and say, well, we don't have to be perfect, but the Bible says, God says to be ye holy even as I'm holy, and he also says to strive for perfection. Maybe we're not there yet, but we're working at it. Yeah. And one of the ways we work at it is we need a pastor. That's true. We need someone to correct us when we're wrong. And our pastor, he will preach it like it is. And sometimes you may not (laughs) want to hear it. But man, I'm so thankful that we have somebody that's willing to speak the truth. Yeah. Because so many churches today have these jellyfish backbone, as they call it, (laughs) preachers that just want to tickle your ears and tell you all the good things of God and how you're going to make it, you're going to be okay, you're going to, you're going to make it through. And that's great. And, and I've always said this, every now and then we need to hear that encouragement. We do. But every now and then we need to hear how do we stay holy? How do we walk in holiness? Yeah. How do we keep ourselves from sin? Not, it's going to be okay, God will forgive you this, that, and the other. And that's true. But see, we need a balance. Mm-hmm. We need a pastor that's going to preach the encouragement when God deals with him to do so. And we also need a pastor that's going to be that uh, corrector that's yes. going to use that rod of the word and say, yeah. listen, you don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be doing that. Because folks, a lot of us look at it this way, rules and regulations. But when I see the word, when I see a, a true pastor that preaches it like it is, I see somebody who is keeping me from danger, Yeah, who is setting boundaries to keep me from falling off of a spiritual cliff, so to speak. Yes. So a pastor is so important. And yes. And folks, you will appreciate it one day when you're walking tall and strong and you're able to help others because you had somebody there to be the voice of wisdom for you. That is right. And also another important thing about a pastor is they are there for you or they should be there for you as godly counsel. So if you're in a situation where you have a decision to make or you're just maybe in a desperate situation or maybe you just need some advice and you don't feel like that you can go to anybody else in your church. You should be able to go to your pastor and receive good, solid, biblical, godly counsel because that is part of his job description, basically. He's there to lead and guide us. And I encourage you, if you are in a situation and maybe you don't feel comfortable going to anybody else, go to your pastor. She mentioned something there about counsel. The Bible says, with godly counsel, Make war. 
So the way you truly fight as a strong soldier in Christ, as a soldier that's successful, that's going to win the battles, is you have a voice of counsel, a voice of wisdom, a voice of reason to tell you when you think that you're right. Yeah. When you're in the moment, a lot of times we think we're right. (laughs) And sometimes we get in the flesh and we think, this is really what I want to do. This is really what God wants me to do. But you got that voice of reason, your pastor, to tell you, son, daughter, you know, brother, sister, you don't need to do this because I see something that you don't here. That's true. And a shepherd foresees things. Yes. Uh, he's a watchman. Yes. And the Bible talks about the watchman, that he stands on the wall and he watches for your soul. And he sees things afar off before you even see it sometimes. That's true. You may think that you know everything. But I've said this at some of the churches I've preached at about their pastor. You know, you may be older than your pastor. You may think that you're wiser than him, that you know more than him. And granted, you might. You might have a lot of knowledge of the Word. But the truth is, if God ordains a pastor, that's his position. And he's got that God-ordained calling to see things in the Spirit, to see things, to watch for your soul. And he's there to protect you. So, folks, if you don't have a home church, I encourage you to find a yes. good Bible-based church. If you are in the area where we live, you know, feel free to send me a, an email, and I will give you directions to our church, yes. Truth Matters with Matt at gmail.com, or comment on one of our socials. Send me a message, a DM on one of our socials. If you need a Bible-based church, if you're seeking, if you need prayer, if you need anything, if you need advice, what little we may know, we will try our best to help you. Yes. Please send us a message. We want to hear from you. And uh, we just want to be here to help you and to teach you a few things you know, that will lead you in the path of righteousness and truth. Yeah. And if you've been uh, maybe in a season where you have just been watching church online, maybe you've just kind of got complacent with God, I just want to challenge you and encourage you, go back to church. If you have a church that you watch online, maybe you used to go And now in this season of COVID and all this stuff, you haven't been going. I just want to encourage you to go back to church. There is so much strength there. There's life there. There is unity there. There's love. You you need that. You need that um, that interaction with the saints. So true. And I'm going to leave you with this scripture, Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. If you have a pastor, let's take the time to appreciate them and make it a point to stop them one day and say, hey, thank you for leading me in the truth. Yes. Thank you for being my shepherd, and I appreciate the work you're doing. Yeah. And every now and then, go to your pastor, go to your leaders and say, is there anything I can do for you? Mm -hmm. And trust me, that'll lighten the load. If we all can pull together, as the old song goes, when we all pull together, how happy we'll be. Amen. I hope you have been enlightened by this episode, and I hope this episode was a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends so that we can get the truth out. Have a great day. (laughs) 